Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. We have your top headlines where you live. I'm Jose Carranza. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around on our area. It was a busy week at the Capitol with lots of new bills getting signed into law, most notably the Learns Act. First, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders signed the education reform bill into law at the Capitol. It's expected to go into the next school year. Another new law from the Capitol, the Youth Hiring Act, was signed last Monday. It allows people younger than 16 years old to get jobs without having to get an employment certificate. The governor also signed a bill that would allow Arkansans to download their license, their driver's license, through an app from the Office of Driver Services. We've also learned of a legal challenge that's been filed against a law aiming to change how petition signatures are gathered here in the state of Arkansas. Republican State Senator Brian King and the League of Women Voters filed the lawsuit. The new law raises the number of county petitions organizers are required to gather signatures from. The older requirement was 15, but if this law goes into effect, it would go up to 50 counties. The lawsuit argues the bill violates state constitution by putting new limits on the initiative process. Now let's take a check of your weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. Thanks, Jose. Uh, yeah, temperatures today going to be on the cool side. Cooler air has been filtering in with this chillier air mass going back to late last week. Today, we kind of bottom out with that, and then we're going to start to warm up as we go through the at least middle part of the work week. Late week into the weekend, we return to some more cooler weather. This is about 15, 10 degrees below average for this time of year. Seasonal average for today, northwest Arkansas, 60 degrees. We're well below that into the mid to upper 40s. And again, this time of year, we should be closer to 65 degrees. That's more the average for us for this date. And uh, yeah, we're well below that in the River Valley as well. Upper 40s to low 50s. Plenty of sunshine today. A breeze about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Winds relaxed down to 5 to 10. Another chilly night. Scattered clouds, 20s and 30s going into Tuesday. Tuesday will track a weak disturbance, a fast moving one, diving southeast across Oklahoma and skirting parts of the Washita's Areas closer to the Red River will have a better chance for a shower or two tomorrow. But we're going to have to watch LaFleur County maybe Scott County can't roll out a sprinkle. The rest of us are dry with a mix of sun and clouds. Highs in the 50s area wide, 60s area wide Wednesday as south winds start to bring in some warmer air. Also bring in more moisture, which will set us up for the next chance for showers and thunderstorms as we get into Thursday. That's our next front coming in. A chance for a scattered shower or thunderstorm will be possible as we go through the whole day with a better chance for maybe more widespread rain and a strong storm or two by the back end of our Thursday. And then behind that front, we're going to be looking at cooler air coming in. As we go into our Friday, 40s, a north wind over 30, uh, gusting over 30 miles per hour is going to yeah, lead to a cooler St. Patrick's Day, feeling like the 30s, but we will be dry with sunshine coming out. But the cooler air sticks around through next weekend. Well, the Don Tyson School of Innovation is offering the chance to earn an associate's degree upon completing high school courses. The program is through an accelerated learning program at Northwest Arkansas Community College. The Don Tyson School of Innovation opened in 2014 as a Springdale Public Schools open enrollment public conversion charter school serving about 200 eighth graders, said Kelly Bortz, Don Tyson principal. The school now serves about 2,370 students in grades kindergarten through 12th grade with the mission of ensuring every student graduates with a diploma, plus through personalized and accelerated learning connected to the arts, college, business, or industry. And the alleyway from Centennial Plaza North to Walnut Street in Rogers is closed this week, starting today at 8 a.m. through Friday. This is to allow a cut to connect into the sewer in the alley as part of the work in Centennial Plaza. Access will still be available to the alley from Elm Street to the south up to Centennial. And with everyone's eyes on the NCAA tournament, you'll find one team with a Razorback name. The Razorbacks or Hogs are, after all, arguably the state's premier sports team. But one couple is finding success in the nickname, not mentioned, Pigs. I sat down with the two to find out where the idea for this Pigs hat came from. Lance and Lindsay Fairchild are Razorback fans from Maumel, out to create their own look. Everybody has kind of the same standard Razorback gear, and we wanted stuff like that we would like to wear like, and, and be a little different. Since 2008, the couple's golf apparel and accessory company has evolved from outfitting the Razorback golf team to this. In 2018, the couple made their first hat with P-I-G-S written across it. I wanted that hat. 
I just didn't know that everybody else did too. Lance says he started giving the hats to friends, one an avid baseball fan that attended regionals. And it was like all over TV. But the moment that really changed it for the couple was when Lance attended one of his first football games in 2021. In the SEC Nation's game day fashion, analysts picked helmets for their predicted winners. Only this time, analyst Jordan Rogers borrowed a fan's pig's hat from the crowd. We're literally en route to the game. My phone's blowing up. I had 500 hats. Before we made it to the game, the hats were gone. And so at that point, I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be something. From there, fans, athletes, and even hog icons began repping the brand all over social media and even on TV. An otherwise accidental creation turned hog sensation. Like The demand was insane. We had to figure out how to do it the best way to make enough product, but also secure the brand. Like we had to trademark pigs. It really caught my eye, though, and I started asking around. People already knew about it, and they were asking me the same thing. Where do you get it? Roman Villasana is the founder and CEO of Swoon Juice Bar, right off MLK in the heart of Fayetteville. Roman has Razorback gear, including the hats, on display. Every time I go online to show a, a customer, it's out of stock. While everyone scrambles to grab one of these hats, the Fairchilds have not only made friends, but also helped others along the way. Just like Fayetteville, just like the Razorbacks, it's, it's all like one big family. Uh, everybody knows everybody. And we're all trying to help out each other. It's more valuable than the dollar that we earn. The networking and just the friendships. So like I always say, like the more good you do, the more good you can do. With their product now becoming an Arkansas fan staple, they just have one thing left to say. Gosh, thank everybody for their support and like yeah. repping this stuff. Like, I mean, I think that that's one thing. Like, I'm. We're proud to be from Arkansas. We're proud of our fan base because I think it's the best fan base yeah. there is. Now, Lance says they work very closely with the university and are looking to finally be licensed. That means a lot of new Razorback here could be on the way, so stay tuned. And those are some of the top headlines on this Monday. We'll continue to follow the news all day. Catch up again with us this evening on your 5 News at 4, 5, and 6, and 10. I'm Jose Carranza. Have a great day.